Hello teachers, I'm Danielle Parrott and this is a video showing you an activity that I do with my AP Biology students called Let's Get This Party Started. It's all about the origins of life on Earth uh, and Earth itself as we know it. This covers many of the big idea number one essential knowledge points for um, the new AP Bio curriculum as you can read there. What the students will be doing is first they will make a slideshow um, to answer a specific question. It needs to be five slides or fewer with one slide for citations. Some will want it to be longer, but being concise and brief is a skill they need to work on. Also, the, the big fun thing is they get to make a screencast just like this one. Um, and so they have to make it and they have to publish it on YouTube, but it must be only two to three minutes. So short slideshow, short presentation. Uh, and then they will link their video to this slideshow. So questions, questions, questions. The questions that the students will be given to answer are these. Now note, I divide them. I have them do this in pairs, um, no larger than a group of three. So they're just given a very broad question. How old is the earth? How did life begin? What caused mass extinctions? How quickly does speciation occur? And is evolution still occurring? Now, when they're not going to do some research and just come back with the answer 4.54 billion years old. That's lame. Uh, I mean, that's accurate, but they need to have the actual answer. They need to have um, evidence for that. How do they know that? What's the science behind it? What are some examples? These are all things they need to add in to their slide. So I have here the instructions for how to make a screencast using Screencast-O-Matic, which is what I'm using to make this one right here. It is so easy, it's not even funny. Um, my students, because our email system is con is actually run through Gmail, they automatically all have their own school YouTube accounts. And so they'll make their screencast and then they'll upload it to YouTube. It's important though that students, when they do this, set their privacy to unlisted. This makes it so that only people that actually have the link to their video can see it. So then after publishing it and letting it upload and process, their video will be ready. And then they need to take the link to that video and hyperlink it to their actual question at the beginning of this slideshow. So after they make it, I have this actual slideshow, or if you want to, you can just have a slide or a document with those questions in it in some sort of shared folder. And so, for instance, here is one that a student did. Open link a new window. So you can see that the students, they take ownership of their learning. They get to learn a technology skill that they will be able to use in other uh, projects. Um, they have the question driving their learning and they'll get to share this in class with all of their peers. It's also important that at the very end um, of their first round, they watch their video twice. They actually write down a reflection. What do they feel like they did well? What will they change next time? and then they need to do it another time. So they need to revise and do another take. And then again, they need to watch, reflect, and revise as much as necessary. Now, I do not want to make you think that perfect is what's required. Some students will get really caught up in if they, they, um, if they do that right there, that's not a big deal. They should not feel like they need to totally go back and remake a screencast or a video just because of that. So, but they do need to do their best. It does need to be a video that clearly communicates the answer to their question because this is going to be a tool they use to teach their classmates. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you can use it in your class. 